I built this unit here in 2010. Um, I fully realised then that I had no flow hole in the bottom here. I was trying to bring my flow in this direction. <coughs> um, there's an area on this that I, can, I consider a, a heat affected zone. And that's where your bubble mass gathers. Um, if I go on to one of these past ones, this is old notes, see? And if we take a, a series of plates, we've got our bubbles rising up in them, you know? And what the bubble actually does is it causes impedance. You've got electrical deflection, reflection. It results in impedance, so it's, it's basically stopping the flow going from one plate to the next in the electrical current. And this is basically what I termed as a heat affected zone. Um, it can become quite radical actually, and it's to do with the size of bubbles as well. They're, they're, they're microscopic to start with, they get bigger and bigger, they gather together and you end up with a big footprint stuck to the plate. Um, you need to excuse the props here, but I'm going to kind of show you what I mean. If we take a normal current flow, it's flowing perpendicular to the other plate. So it's heading straight across through the water. And it's hitting the other plate no problem. Um, once you start getting production, you start getting bubbles. Once you start getting bubbles, your electrical flow doesn't flow quite so easily it'll hit against a, a bubble and it'll be deflected that's causing impedance and basically if you can imagine between the two plates a uh, bit jerky there a massive bubbles and it's pretty self-evident what happens to the electrical current you know this is basically impedance equals heat equals amps increase and amps draw and we end up in short we're on away amps and it's all to do with the footprint of the bubble and the bubble rising. You kind of get away from it, it's, it's a bit of a dilemma. Um, the one equals the other. You get production, you get bubbles. Okay, here we have a standing upright plate. And the bubble basically gathers smaller bubbles coming up and the footprint gets bigger and bigger until it eventually releases. Remember this is all happening pretty quickly. But nevertheless, this is what's going on. Um, I found that, you know, guys that are using cones, you know, they've got one thing working for them. And that's when you come to a 30, 38 degree angle of a cone, you get buoyancy acting in your favour. And the bubble's footprint becomes smaller. The bubble actually extends up the way, with, gravity, uh, with, with buoyancy. So if you were taking your plates and your plate block and you were just doing a simple thing like adding an angle to them, putting your whole your whole unit at a slight angle, you do somewhat alleviate this situation. So it acts like a basic one side of a cone. Uh, that said, if you take your plate as as a block, as a mass, what you'll often see is the water level running in a lot of plates down here. This is because you've got foam at the top, you've got the pressure or the, the back pressure of anything you're producing going up the line. It's causing back pressure into your block. You've got foam at the top, then you've got the whole massive white bubbles underneath. This is still going on. And then you've got the smaller bubbles acting up into the, the feeding this, this uh, white mass. So in the end you end up with a water level down here somewhere. You know, you've got your water feed for your reservoir and of course we have the reservoir sitting up high. This gives us a gravity feed down into it. But the gravity feed, you know, that's, that's fair enough. But you'll find that the unit, when it starts to pulse, it'll be doing a couple of things, but let's stick to the one thing at the moment. What happens is when your bubbles are rising, it's acting like a self-perpetuating self pump it's then drawing the water down and this is what's going on and you know your gravity feed and the restrictions the height you're working on under the bonnet of your car you just aren't going to get the height to, to take up this this space here it's just not going to happen 
you have to put a pump in there. When you put a pump in, you're forcing the water in and it's removing these bubbles. But just to put a pump in the line isn't quite sufficient enough. Uh, this heat affected zone will, will just stay there, eh? I mean, that there is, is basically the size of it. And that's where your bubble mass comes in. Now I'd used a, a number A, I've, I use a pump, and to try and make sure I'm getting in between each plate, I'd been using a series of nozzles. Now, I had adapted a number of different nozzles and they work okay. Um, the, the acrylic ones actually work the best. And I did get a flow in between each plate. But it's a very hit and a miss kind of factor, you know. But if you notice here, the scorching on the plate, this plate, the you know, the flux leakage had still been occurring for the, the whole edge here, for the bore, for the hole. And the electrical current that was leaking was getting drawn up with the, the flowy water that was coming in through the nozzle. So there you see the scorch mark right there on the plate. And that's where the flow was coming in. The flow does work, it does clear the impedance, it does clear the bubbles a lot quicker. Um, I'm only using a, a 6 litre a minute pump and it really does the job and it definitely keeps the amps down. I've, I've had it running for hours and hours and hours and my unit basically doesn't really increase in temperature 2, 3, 4 degrees above ambient temperature. So I didn't have any problems with that whatsoever. What I have got problems with is trying to make this flux leakage disappear. I have in the past been using various uh, silicones and things but I'm going to go into that because I've rethought this entirely now um, I've come away from nozzles and um, I'm kind of rethinking this whole issue but it's important that you understand this flux leakage um, not the flux leakage, the, you know, the, the heat affected zone excuse the props but <laughs> as soon as you get a bubble in the road of the, of the electrical current you know, your current will pass quite happily over to the plate, no problem, until you get bubbles in the way. And as soon as it hits the bubbles, it's going to be deflected in every direction. You know? It really is, it's going to be deflected everywhere. To give you some kind of tangible evidence of this, I'm going to show you a calculation. Okay, regarding impedance, um, I know this is... This is specific acoustic impedance here so you know but it's more to put a point across than anything else um, we've got a plethora of different values here for different materials gold, air, aluminium, cast iron, lead, silver, tin, tungsten carbides and down this one we have our basic values of acoustic impedance if we take air and then we look at water. We we'll have our values here: one four eight zero 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 four. Uh, stainless steel forty four point eight. Um, if we move back here in the book, so we're all thumbed book. It's just to give us, this is properties of a sound wave and it's, it's basically acoustic impedance being Z, eh? Um I'm not going to go into the, you know, the, the, the densities and things of this because it just, it's, it's mind-boggling. Um, even to anybody that's ever used to using it, it's still proverbial mind-boggler. But uh, if, we, if we just look at the, the basic values here, steel and water, um, and it's, it's a, re a reflected energy times 100% squared. So we take a values given, and we can end up with some uh, an impedance value at 88%. Now, considering that th this is my where I'm drawing this now, considering that we're using electrical uh, current and not an acoustic wavelength, it's, they're all still wavelengths. And this is just to put a point across. 
basically I replaced the the gas with it with the value of air, which in an electrical situation it's it's much the same because it's not going to pass through either. Um, I used water and stainless steel, and when I've done the figures out, we can come out with a ninety eight percent. Obviously, the more bubbles you've got going on there, the more impedance you've got going on. So you can come out with a ninety eight percent reflection rate. And there's your runaway amps, as far as I'm concerned anyway. I mean, I know this is ultrasound and, and sonic, but, you know, having said that, you know, I'm, I'm just taking a, two interfaces, and, you know, the average, this, this one was water, and this one was air and gas, and you can come out with 92%. So, nonetheless, they're high values, and I think this is where the runaway amps is coming from. So... Basically, I know this is acoustic before anybody starts saying anything, but I'm just drawing the the parallel to it, okay? So, that said. <laughs> this is a video um, of one of my plates running, a plate block. And if we notice, we're producing right out of that the gas is coming out of that, that sort of space, see the square space that we've seen on the other plate. Can you see these cascading up? Let's let it come back into focus here. There we go. This is impedance. This is what you want to clear away. She's running up the entire face of the plates. We notice the, the plates are here and I've got the foam up the top but for about three inches under the surface you've got a massive bubbles and you, you'll have seen it yourself if you've done it in tanks and things. It's just a mass of white bubbles and it comes out like a white sort of you know, a very reflective white layer, about three inches. Well, when your unit's in this situation, that's going to come down three inches in your plate. So straight away you've got a massive impedance right there at this, unless you clear it. So it's clearing this that's the, I say again, but it's, it really is important to clear that. That's a good one there, we'll just bypass it, but I'll go back. There, we can actually see the a good clear view of how much under the surface bubbles we've got. And these will not shift, these, these, will, these will not dissipate, because you've got a whole pile of smaller bubbles feeding this bubble mass. And it's held in by the foam uh, in this, this situation anyway. If you have your reservoir to the side, the quicker you can get it out of the road, the better. And clear this. That, that's the real thing that's going on here. Okay. So, to clear the seat affected zone, um, in the past, like I had mentioned, I had been using uh, to stop the flux leakage, JB Weld. You know, I've used high temperature. Um, RTVs, silicones, etc, etc. But, you know, between your, your plate spacings you've got a 3mm gasket, so you're working in a 3mm area. And if you take this as being a mill, for instance, of the, the, the plate, and then another one adjacent to it being a mill off the plate, you're leaving yourself a millimetre gap to try and get some water in there. And it's not just enough to allow a a flow to, to occur through a gravity feed because you're just not going to get the pressure for a gravity feed no, no unless you can get it right up high so it's going to be drawn it in through this pulsating action going on and the rising of your bubbles acting like a pump drawn in the water that's that's not sufficient you need a pump in there so it's not just sufficient to put a pump on 
to here and let it push the water in because if you take a plate block and as soon as your water goes in it's going to start rising in the first few and you're not going to get any benefit in the back few it's, it's not going to be dispersed enough equally enough by just using this type of this type of sort of flux leakage fixing you know in the past I've used nozzles and I've cut the nozzles in such a shape like this so it, it's a kind of hit and a miss affair like I said and at least part of this slash mark at that angle feeds between each plate so it works quite well as did the the multi hole one but if you look at the holes they again are coming at an angle across they're angled across so at least some of them at some point is feeding in between whatever space I'm left with I've come completely away from this whole notion of using these nozzles um, in the next video I'm going to show you what I'm now kind of rethinking the whole lot and I'm going to be using now that's what this is for it's been a test and it's not actually plates it's just obviously acrylic with this new type A fixing in it and they work really well in fact it's been sitting under my nose for the last couple of years and I just never really noticed it I've been kind of going with these so if you watch the next couple of videos you'll see that I've come away from this type A idea and I'm now going to be using this type of idea so okay